It's a lively evening in the movie theater and projectionist Paul gets the movie playing for the public. Then he passes the time by reading a book about the mysteries of the world, including one about the lost colony on Roanoke Island and the mysterious word Croatoan. Suddenly the power goes out in the whole building. Paul uses his flashlight to look around and is surprised he doesn't hear a single noise except for the movie. When the emergency lights turn on, Paul is shocked to see everyone in the theater except him has vanished, although their clothes and accessories were left behind. Then Paul begins searching the mall and bumps into another survivor, a guard who has his own flashlight and hasn't seen anyone either. They team up to search the area and the guard enters a stall when he hears a noise, however he ends up suddenly vanishing as well. At that moment all the lights go out, and Paul sees a shadow jumping at him. Meanwhile Rosemary wanders around the hospital with a flashlight looking for other survivors. The situation is the same here, everything is dark and people have vanished. When she reaches the operating room, she's disturbed to find a man that was abandoned in the middle of his surgery and now he's begging for help. Suddenly the emergency lights go out and Rosemary accidentally drops her flashlight, but after retrieving it, she discovers the man is gone as well. Afterward Rosemary begins calling out for her missing son. The next morning, news anchor Luke wakes up and puts out the candles his girlfriend left last night. He's surprised she isn't around but still starts his day as usual, not noticing the shadows moving in the corners. The TV and his phone aren't working, and there's water in front of the fridge, yet Luke doesn't think it's weird. The elevator isn't working either and there are clothes on the floor, but Luke doesn't notice. When he makes it to the reception, he sees the guard is gone, yet he only grabs a newspaper and leaves. On his way out, Luke finally notices that the newspapers are from yesterday. It isn't until he steps on someone's glasses that he finally looks up and discovers the whole city is deserted, there are abandoned cars and clothing everywhere. Suddenly a plane crashes down the street, indicating how serious this is. Desperate for answers, Luke rushes into his workplace, still not noticing the shadows moving on the walls. He checks every room but finds nobody, and all the radios have run out of battery. In a drawer he finds a picture of him with his ex-wife but at that moment he finally notices the shadows moving and goes after them, dropping the picture which immediately becomes covered by the darkness. 72 hours later, Luke appears running down the dark streets with his body covered with flashlights. These past days he's learned how to keep the shadows away from him, and now he's jumping from car to car trying to find one that works to no avail. Frustrated, Luke decides to take a break in a car and make sure to lock the door. Suddenly a man begins knocking on the window to ask for a light because his lighter is about to stop working, but Luke refuses to help him. Noticing the moving shadows, the man tries to get away, but his lighter goes out and the darkness takes him as well. Afterward Luke gets out of the car and goes around picking up any supplies he can find, unaware that a Brianna watches him from afar. Eventually Luke finally finds a truck that still has some power, but sadly it isn't enough to make the vehicle move. Then he looks around the truck for supplies and finds a gun, which he keeps. Suddenly he hears a noise and begins running to it, discovering that his music coming from a pub that still has lights. When he goes inside, he finds it empty too, so he steals all the batteries he can find and has a drink while looking at his old wedding ring. At that moment, the lights start to flicker, so Luke goes to the basement and finds a generator keeping the power up in the pub. He makes sure the generator is working well before looking around, only to suddenly find himself threatened by James and his shotgun. James makes Luke drop the gun then takes him back upstairs, where Luke tries to finish his drink and causes James to fire a warning shot. A furious Luke yells at him, but he can tell James isn't capable of killing anybody and gently tries chatting with the kid instead. Luke points out they hadn't seen another face in days so they should calm down and have a drink. James reveals that he recognizes Luke from TV and that his mom was the pub's bartender. He's been waiting for her since she left to check the church because a guy said he saw a light there before he vanished. Guessing the generator doesn't have much power left, Luke announces they're leaving the city together, but James refuses because he's waiting for his mom. Luke gets angry and yells at him again, pointing out that it's 11 AM and yet it's dark outside. Every day the sun comes up later and goes down sooner, meaning there's less daylight. He tells James that his mother isn't coming back, so they should leave before the generator runs out. James refuses to believe it, so Luke tries to leave alone. At that moment, Rosemary comes inside, still searching for her son. She's having a breakdown that causes her to take Luke's gun and fire before she falls to the floor in desperation. Not far from there, Paul lies on the street with his head heavily bleeding, but he still manages to crawl into a bus stop that still has power. Moments later in the pub, Rosemary has finally calmed down and when James asks if she's a doctor, it makes her think about what happened the night of the tragedy. She had been outside having a cigarette break when suddenly all the lights went off and she heard some screaming and crashing noises. Afterward she ran home, only to discover the nanny and her son had vanished too. Rosemary explains that the baby's father used to drink in this pub, so she came to check if the man had brought him here. Suddenly the group hears a noise and comes out to see Paul shouting in the distance. At first Luke refuses to help him, but when Rosemary and James insist on doing the right thing, Luke decides to go after all. With a flashlight in hand, Luke runs to Paul as he ignores the shadows moving around him. When he makes it to the bus stop he immediately picks Paul up, only for his flashlight to stop working. The shadows begin coming closer, 
So Luke lights a sparkler and takes Paul to run back to the pub. Meanwhile James thinks he can hear his mom and tries to go out, but Rosemary stops him before he can open the door to the shadows. On the street, Luke falls and injures his ankle, giving the shadows time to surround them. Luke does his best to push Paul along and luckily Rosemary opens the door to let light out, which keeps the shadows at bay and allows the men to get inside. Afterward, Luke puts tape on his injured leg while Rosemary takes care of Paul's head wound. Paul tells them what happened in the mall, saying that when his light went out, he was hit by an unknown being. Then he's sure he was taken somewhere, but when his light came back on, he found himself on the street. Luke doesn't believe Paul was taken but Paul swears he was, saying it was too dark to see faces but he could hear whispers, yet he hadn't been able to scream, he could only fight to exist. Rosemary cuts in saying there must be a reason why they were chosen, perhaps it's a punishment from God. Frustrated, Luke grabs James and asks Rosemary if a child deserves to be punished, but they shut up when suddenly the lights start flickering. They can see the shadows moving, so Paul tells everyone to start disconnecting all the machines so the generator's power can last longer. Then they go to the basement to check on the generator and Luke discovers there's a locked door down there, so James explains it's an emergency exit. Feeling helpless, Paul gives a few kicks to the generator, which causes the light to flicker again and the shadows to get creepy. Luke pulls Paul away from the generator, and once he's calmed down, Paul shares the story of the lost colony on Roanoke Island. In 1587, 117 people formed the first English colony on that island. However when a supply ship arrived, they discovered that the community had vanished without a trace, and the only thing they found was the word Croatoan scratched on a fence post. Nobody knows what it means, but Paul thinks it was a warning the colony got before they were reset. Suddenly Paul collapses because of unbearable pain in his head, so they carry him to the pool table where Rosemary takes care of him. Luke goes to the bar to get ice, but he's feeling hopeless too and starts crying as he takes out his old wedding ring and remembers what happened the day of the tragedy. While he was following the shadow he entered the main stage and the power came back, causing the cameras to move. Luke rushes to check the tapes of the last newscasts, which were interrupted by the shadows. This was caught on camera and Luke had to watch his girlfriend vanish. All the other show recordings went through the same thing, and a mysterious shadow appeared on the screens. One of the TVs received a live transmission from a Chicago reporter, who claimed he heard the voice of his dead brother calling him from the darkness. His theory was that the shadows in the dark could use tricks to attract victims and he advised everyone to only trust lights that are on their own hands. Then the power went out again and Luke could hear a voice in the darkness, only for the shadows to start chasing him until he entered a room and ripped down the blinds to let the sunlight in. Back in the present, Luke tells the others that they should leave before the generator fails, and points out that the lights in the pub may be a trap to attract people to the shadows. Rosemary thinks maybe they should accept their destiny, since the shadows may be heaven and the voices are calling them to reunite with their loved ones, she also refuses to leave without her son. A furious Luke yells at them, pointing out that by using the truck they could find a hospital for Paul and maybe even search for Rosemary's son and James' mom. As the lights start flickering again, Luke offers a speech about survival and points out that if this is a reboot like Paul said, then he wants to see it as a new beginning and not an end. The group agrees to leave, so Luke and Rosemary will go out to bring the truck while James takes care of Paul. Before leaving, Luke gives a car keychain to James, saying it's a good luck charm. Meanwhile Rosemary checks Paul's bandages and he starts talking about how pretty she is, wondering if he could ever have a woman like her. To comfort him, Rosemary kisses him. As soon as the duo leaves, the lights in the pub flicker. James keeps an eye on Paul, who keeps rambling about random topics. When he falls asleep, the lights flicker again, so James wakes him up. Paul wishes he could hear music one more time and convinces James to connect the jukebox again. This forces the generator to use too much power and the lights keep on flickering, but hearing the music allows James to imagine the pub is full of people and he can see his mother at the bar. He only snaps out of it when he hears Paul yelling in pain, so James rushes to calm him down before going to the bathroom for water. At that moment the lights go off for a few minutes, and when they come back, Paul calls for James, who doesn't reply. He gets off the table to look for the boy, only to find his things on the ground. Worried, Paul goes to look for James in the basement and finds the emergency door open, so he crosses it. He finds a long corridor illuminated with bright lights and hears James calling for him, so Paul begins looking for him. Eventually he finds another door at the end of the corridor, only to discover that it opens to a brick wall. Frustrated, he hits the bricks as the lights begin going out one by one behind him. As the song from the jukebox starts playing, a shadow appears in the corridor and the darkness begins covering Paul as he repeats I exist over and over. It's then revealed that Paul is actually still on the table, and the power in the pub goes off for a few seconds. When they come back on, James is still in the bathroom and he comes out to check on Paul only to find him gone. The shadows and lights start flickering in the pub, so James runs to the basement to check the generator. Outside, Rosemary and Luke approach the truck as quickly as possible because Rosemary's flashlight goes out. They begin pushing the truck toward the pub, however Luke's leg wound begins hurting so they need to take a break. While they rest, 
Rosemary shares a story about her son learning to talk and Luke confesses his ex-wife is in Chicago, but he doesn't think she would want to see him. At that moment Luke's flashlight fails as well, but they get light from a new source, it's Brianna, who is aiming her own flashlight at them, but she also gets the attention from the darkness which starts closing in around them. The duo tries to tell Brianna to come to them, but instead she runs away. Luke tries to go after her, but his wounded leg makes him fall. When the shadows are about to capture him, Rosemary manages to turn on the car's headlights and scares the shadows away, so Luke can return to her. After a few seconds though, the truck's lights start to fail and they can see weird shadows in the fog. Luke grabs pieces from other cars and manages to build a torch, but unfortunately they left the lighter in the pub. Suddenly Rosemary turns off the truck's lights and starts running while dragging Luke with her until they make it to the hospital. The door is locked, so Luke shoots the lock and they manage to rush inside. After admitting she actually didn't work here, Rosemary quickly finds some matches and lights the torch, so Luke thinks they're ready to leave. However Rosemary tells him to wait while she goes to the storage room to get alcohol to keep the torch lit. While Luke decides to put his ring back on, Rosemary hears a baby crying and sees a light at the window, so she follows the noise outside and discovers a baby carriage under a street light. She immediately runs to it, only to find the carriage empty. Hearing Rosemary outside, Luke runs to the street too but it's too late, Rosemary vanishes at the same time the light goes off. Terrified of a shadow shaped like Rosemary, Luke runs back to the truck and starts to push him alone. In the pub's basement, James is scared because he can see a human-shaped shadow approaching him, but before anything happens Luke finally returns. After sharing a hug, James is devastated to hear they've lost Rosemary too, but Luke promises they'll make it. The duo then connects the generator to the truck and Luke leaves James behind the wheel before going into the basement to finish the connection. James tries to start the truck and after a few failed tries, the vehicle finally works again but also leaves the pub without power. Inside, the shadows begin chasing after Luke, but he manages to run out and join James in the truck. Panicking, Luke begins driving in reverse with the truck's hood open, which is blocking his sight. A few blocks later, he has no choice but to stop the truck and ask James to keep his foot on the gas pedal to keep the engine working while he goes out to close the hood. At that moment, James notices the church has light and calls for his mother while running toward it, ignoring Luke's warnings. In fact Luke is so desperate not to lose the truck that he decides to leave James and drives away. On his way to Chicago, Luke is shocked to see the word Croatoan written on a bridge, which makes him rethink things. Meanwhile James enters the church and finds the shadows are slowly taking over the room too. There is a circle of candles by the altar and next to it, James can see a shadow that whispers his name in his mom's voice. At that moment a shadow tries to attack him from behind, but suddenly Luke crashes into the church and lights up the room. Luke asks James to get in the truck but James refuses, saying he's found his mom. Unfortunately when James checks the altar, he only finds a pile of clothing, confirming his mother is gone. Luke tries to come for him, but the truck's light goes out and sadly he vanishes as well, dropping his ring in the process. As the shadows slowly begin to cover the church again, James sits in the middle of the candle circle while repeating his name and the words I exist. One by one, the candles go out and darkness takes over. The next morning, the sun finally rises again. James is surprised to wake up in the church and discovers a candle stayed lit all night. At that moment Brianna shows up and tells him that's her bed, but when James tries to leave, Brianna asks him to stay with her. She reveals she's been surviving thanks to a solar-powered flashlight, and in return James shows her Luke's charm. When the kids come out, they find a horse eating fallen apples, so they decide to ride it to leave the city. When night falls, the shadows take the form of Luke, Paul, and Rosemary and whisper using their voices. The duo keeps them at bay with Brianna's flashlight, but their future is uncertain.